Stay put, the quiet voice had told us. Pay attention to where you are. We were in East End, Saskatchewan, on the northernmost edge of the great North American plains. We were traveling through time, through memory, the invisible dimension. But when we're hurtling down the road from Saskatoon to East End, it often seems very long. And partway through the journey, I wonder, why are we doing this? What is it about this little town at the end of the road, more or less, that keeps drawing us back? But the second that we're here and we look out the window at the hills, somehow I know it's where we ought to be right now. I love the quiet, I love the spaciousness, I love the exposure to the cosmos in the night sky. I love the fact that deer walk past my window. I first came to East End around the year 2000, and I came because I was working on a book about grasslands, about the whole prairie ecosystem between, you know, Saskatoon-ish and the Gulf of Mexico. Why not go big, right? And I needed to immerse myself in real grassland. So we ended up here, my partner Keith and I, for a couple of weeks. But that didn't seem to be enough, and so the next year we came back for, against all kinds of logic, we ended up buying this house just up the street from the Stegner house. We had bought this house in a town that was four and a half hours drive, high speed down the highway drive from where we lived most of the time. So for whatever reason, spirit speaking out of the earth, the necessity to make sense of this decision that practically doesn't make very much sense. There was a strong impetus to have a reason for being here. And I kept having this feeling that we were here for a reason and that this place wanted to teach me something. I don't know what to make of that. Um, all I know is that it is how I felt. And so, since I work as a writer, um, the reason seemed to be to again pay attention and to find out what it was that was important about this place. In the wide bottom of the ditch, two coyotes are gnawing on the carcass of a road-killed deer. Caught in the flare of the headlights, their eyes glint, their muzzles are bloody, their bodies jitter in and out of the glare. There is something unexpectedly fleshy about them, something carnal and wild. We watch for a few minutes, then with a nod of agreement, leave them to their feast. A door has opened into the darkness, giving us a privileged glimpse of the life that goes on in secret around us. A thrill of expectation rises in my body as we roll on toward East End. Whatever this place turns out to be, it's going to be an adventure. A Geography of Blood tells the story of what I was required to learn by coming back to this place over and over again, over a period of about 10 years. And at the heart of the story is the violent, bureaucratic interaction between the many indigenous groups who claimed homeland here and the advancing oversight of the Canadian government. So that's the story that lies at the heart of that book. The way the Canadian government 
here and in many other places, took advantage of people's starvation to displace them and require them to do what the authorities wanted. People who have spoken to me from the Yanit First Nation, from the Healing Lodge, they were grateful to have this story told. And I felt that it was important not to leave these stories only for Indigenous people to tell. That those of us who have benefited from the, all these displacements and starvations and destruction, that we have a responsibility to figure out some way of telling the story. And if people had hated it, or if they do come to criticize me, well, I can live with that too. Wallace Stegner is a famous American author who lived for a very important part of his youth in this very house. This house was built by his father and he lived here, I think, was it till he was about 11? Something like that, through a very important part of his life. Um, he went on to become a novelist, an essayist. The, I believe he was the first teacher of creative writing in North America, so he was at Stanford. You know, he was a very important man. He was a very powerful voice for environmental conservation. And he was also a troubled man in some ways because his childhood, partly because of his father, had been very difficult. And so he found it important at one point in his life to come tiptoeing back into East End. And out of that came what's probably his most famous book, Wolf Willow. Wallace Stegner was absolutely a man of his time, right? So he knew he was retelling the story of the settlers. He was retelling it to, as he said, incorporate failure, which was the, by far the most common experience for people who came here in those early decades of the 20th century. But he had a lot of blind spots about race. One of the most important things, I think, about Wolf Willow is that it invited people to re-examine the whole experience of settlement. And obviously, it shone a spotlight on this very place, you know? It really does put East End, not to mention this very house, on an important literary map. Um, basically, what I'll do is, is um, give you a little bit of an overview of, of where we're at, but more importantly... The East End Arts Council is the most amazing group of people. So you have a community of five to six hundred people. They host events as much as they're able and encourage the arts in a way that is, it's truly extraordinary. They manage this house and keep it available, pandemics notwithstanding. They keep it available to the community of writers and other artists. When the uh, Arts Council in 1988 had bought the house and started making renovations, they tore the gyprock off this wall and in behind was this beautiful staircase. And the wood is all original. The wood on the staircase is original. All the trim around the windows and doors and the ceiling, all that is original wood. And the flooring is the original flooring that, that was in the house. The house was built in 1917 and the family lived here until 1921. This is a picture of Wallace Stegner when he was younger, sitting on his mother's lap. And this is his brother Cecil on his aunt's knee.
And this was Wallace's bedroom. Him and his brother shared this little room when they were growing up. Now it is the study for the artist to work. We have a large table that it works for either somebody that's doing writing or if they're doing artwork. And then if you look out the window, we've got a beautiful view of the, uh, of the countryside. So it's inspirational for the artist that's sitting here. We're always fundraising in order to operate the house. The COVID pandemic has affected the Arts Council and the Wallace Stegner House. Because we've had to uh, cancel residencies, people from across the world have had to cancel. There was people coming from Jamaica, from the UK. And this year in September, we're gonna be launching an online fundraiser to compensate for some of the losses that we've had with COVID. For me, being where I am is perfect. It's where I want to belong. The stories that we tell ourselves, the stories that I tell myself about who I am, they can only really be told here. You know, sometimes people need to be far away to look back on something and be able to see it more clearly and I don't seem to need to be somewhere else. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.